Homegrown trouble. The issue is domestic terrorism. And the question is, is the passage of legislation to combat domestic terrorism a government overstep or necessary surveillance? Welcome to Political Playlist. <laughs> All right. Are we ready, guys? Happy hour. Happy, Happy hour. hour. <laughs> fuck that up. Oh, so bad. God. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Political Playlist Happy Hour. I'm Michael Christoph. I'm Anna Muskie Goldwyn. Why do I always go last? I don't know. The worst. Okay. Yes. Why? Well, I'm Anthony Barquet. Anna is coming from like the MoMA of some kind. What? What is this like collage behind you? This is a living room in my parents' apartment. No wall space went unused there. That's I have a bone to pick, and I just got to get it off my chest. Oh. So, uh, what is in my martini today? Mm. Uh, do you, I can I say? Can I guess what your bone to pick is? Yeah. Is that they didn't have any blue cheese olives at the grocery store. Blows. How many martinis do you think I'm drinking over here? <laughs> <laughs> I think your bone to pick is that you ran out of ice, so it's not super cold. No, it's an onion. Oh, it's a the what? It's a, no, the martini, the martini onion. Yeah. By the way, that if I'm ever, disgusting. if I'm with anyone who ever orders a martini with an onion, I will leave <laughs> Wait, the table I didn't even know that that was a thing. That sounds yeah. horrible. I like, wanted to no, try it out. Disgusting. Today, we are talking about the domestic terrorism incident that occurred this time in a predominantly black neighborhood in Buffalo, New York, that killed 10 people and wounded another three. Obviously, you know, there's so much to unpack with this. It's yet another uh, flashing, scalding red light about uh, the issue of guns in this country. But rather than kind of dive yet again into the, the gun debate, we thought we would look at what are our young politicians doing as far as legislation goes. So, Anna, can you give us the question again that you asked, which I thought was a really good one? Yeah. So the question is, is the passage of legislation to combat domestic terrorism a government overstep or necessary surveillance? A, a big piece of legislation that is about to go to vote in the House. Uh, it is called the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act of 2022. Before we get to the who behind yeah. this bill, can you kind of tell us the what? What does yeah. this bill purport to do? So basically, the bill is aimed at preventing domestic terrorism and combating any threat of violent extremism, specifically by white supremacist groups. What the bill would do is it would set up offices around the country that essentially would track and analyze domestic terrorist activity, allowing the government to take action. And the reason that it's very related to the shooting that happened in Buffalo is we're all hearing now that there was all these this stuff written online by the shooter. And there was a previous incident where he had been pulled out of school and evaluated in a hospital. And so basically the bill is aiming to essentially create an infrastructure so that if there is this stuff posted online or happening in institutions that the government can step in and try to prevent any acts of terror like this. I guess this feels like it's somewhat of an extension uh, and I think this is what a lot Anthony of Anthony has are like a real thinking face on right now. Um, I'm not Ooh. sure about this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Honestly. Well, you agree with almost every Republican in the House, um, <laughs> and a surprising few Democrats that we'll get to. You know, Anthony, perhaps some of your reticence on this is it's stemming the from uh, the Onion, which, my goodness, <laughs> I, I, you know. You know, How do we, speaking of congressional letters, can we write a letter to the martini onion people? outlawing the onion martini. Honestly, I mean, if you were here, you would pass out from how bad my breast what, smells how, from this like, onion right now. How stinky is it? It's I don't, I, I can on. smell it. I can it's, smell it from 2,000 yeah. miles away. So I want to go back to this bill for, for a moment. It feels like there is a real shared DNA between this and uh, what everyone probably remembers, but maybe doesn't quite know the ins and outs of, mm -hmm. which is the Patriot Act. Yes. Which was passed by Congress and signed into law by Bush 43 in the month and a half after 9 11 in 2001. The Patriot Act expanded the definition of terrorism in the legal sense to incorporate domestic terrorism. So it, it effectively enabled the US government a very broad, uh, long leash as far as how they pursued suspected terrorists right. on domestic soil. So 
is that feels like that's a this is a big component of this new it is i would say that this isn't quite as extensive as the patriot mm-hmm. act was i think that you know obviously when you think about the scale of 911 i think it was literally like we need to do anything right. that we can to prevent this again right. not that that means that we shouldn't be putting all that energy into preventing more mass shootings or other incidents of domestic terrorism but mm-hmm. this bill is not quite the scope you know so there were 207 co-sponsors of this bill right. um, out of 435 people in Kong in the house 24 of those 207 are under the age of 45 are political playlist politicians that we cover oh, and all, they're all Democrats. All of the young ones were Democrats. There are three Republicans, moderate Republicans, who are co-sponsors on this. And Adam I'll Kinsinger. just say that, um, no, actually, it's going to pass. Um, but in the we'll, House. It's going to pass the House. It's going to need 60 votes in the Senate, which is unlikely. Mm. It'll be interesting to see if any Republicans, and specifically young Republicans from yeah. political playlist, do vote for this. So this is what I don't understand. Yeah. So we're going to be setting up offices mm-hmm. in every state, major There's cities. 60, 60 offices. So 60 figure offices. one or two in each state, probably depending on and the And then who the are state. they reporting to? So they're reporting to the probably FBI DOJ. and DOJ. They're reporting yeah. to basically law enforcement. So that's where this becomes complicated. And, homeland and, is, and is the government hiring these people in these offices? Yes, yeah, so they'll all be government employees. Mm-hmm. And it's a yeah, government we're not pro- like getting interns off yeah. the street, bro. Yeah, we're also not having, like, <laughs> like, this isn't like yeah. we're bringing like mercenaries from the Republican side. There's essentially, oh my God, I can't, like what just, <laughs> like what's happening from the Republican side? They're saying that we're setting up this idea of domestic terrorism. And I think I read one Republican quote that's saying, that's saying that domestic terrorism can only be white and right. And yeah. they're of course mm-hmm. arguing that there is domestic terrorism coming from the left in the version of what they would call Antifa and that that wouldn't be covered under this bill. Um, so I think that, that that's the Republican argument against it and, that will and, probably and prevent my, it. And my issue <laughs> here, sorry, sorry to cut you off. That was rude of me. But my, my issue here is then you got to hire people who are not political. And we know that does not happen in our political system today. So this is a perfect segue as to who is for this, who is okay. against. You okay, so we have 27 spons- co-sponsors? 207 or? co-sponsors. Okay. 24 are 24 under the age of 45. Right. All of the young co-sponsors are yep. Democrats. This was brought first to the floor in at the end of April, so about a month mm. ago. Oh, wow. And so it was long ago. it was tabled because can you guess who was also against this? Ooh. I mean the squad? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. really? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, because so, that's like the collective group. So basically the squad mm. who from our platform is AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Jamal Bowman. Corey am I missing Bush. anyone? Corey, Corey Bush. Bush. Corey, Corey Bush is she a squad big, now? She, yeah. She, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's like full. She's like wow. squad princess. She's like, this AOC is my squad. Is my squad this queen. is my squad. A lot of their reasoning around this is basically saying that the yeah. bill as it existed in April would have put undue surveillance on activist groups mm-hmm. like Black Lives Matter or other organizations that she had previously been associated with. And I will say that there are progressive politicians who are co-sponsors who are not in the squad. Richie Torres, Ro Khanna, and Sarah Jacobs, who are all, mm-hmm. I would say, very progressive young politicians um, that are co-sponsors of the original bill. There's a question here. Yeah. Was domestic terrorism happening when all these riots went on? Because granted, right, there were people who were peacefully marching, doing, you know, what they intended to do. And then there were this whole other group who is out there looting buildings, putting them on fire, cars and whatnot, which is our. I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you a quote. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have tweets for us? I have one. I have one quote. Do you want to guess who it's from? Okay, sure. Okay, here we go. Will we know? And this, I think so. They said, I need a clearer definition on how we're defining domestic terrorists. And we need a longer conversation around this. Is more money needed to support this? More money needed. Democrat, obviously. (laughs) We're thinking it's a squad. Hmm. 
Is Richie Torrey's part of this? No, I just squad? said he was an original co-sponsor of the bill. Oh, okay. Open your ears, Anthony. God, I mean, could this be already. an AOC? Could this be AOC? I don't know. I feel like it's it's a new person asking for money. It's like Corey or Jamal or I think it's, it's Corey or Jamal. Oh, uh, wow. So you got two guesses. Jamal Bowman it, right? from New York. Congratulations. Ideally, what the offices would be able to uncover is like, was there a plot to do so, yeah. this act of terrorism? I, I'm like spiraling in my head right now because oh now I'm thinking Don't about... Don't say everything you're thinking. But no, no, because now I'm thinking about cyber, right? right. So like, what right. about if a group is going out there and targeting a specific right. group of people from bringing down their internet, this needs to be fully defined. Yeah. And and at first when you were telling me this, I thought it was related to guns. I'll be honest. Right. And right. I think if it was defined as someone is bringing a, like a gun to a, an area and shooting people, especially a group, you know, if but it ends up being a, But the difference is that's not something that you can like serve, survey, survey. That's what I mean. So like, I like that's a, that in itself is a crime because it's literally happening in that moment. But what this, this is trying to do is be preventative. And that's where it gets difficult. Yeah. I just don't, I, I actually think it's going to be a waste of money because it's not going to be effective in terms of the chains of command it needs to go through. This should be well, a big tech issue. The real issue seems to be some sort of gu meaningful gun right. restriction. And yet they know that they can't do that, right? That there's there's at such an impasse there politically and otherwise that this is sort of the next best option. I agree with you a little bit, Michael, but I think that what this is specifically addressing that is different than regulating guns is this is trying to put in preventative security measures within the government to figure out these things before they happen.